If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrelf, here with a very much rogue Legacy Brew. My favorite of the least represented tribes, to be sure, would be dwarves. <laughs> you don't see very many of them. I'm only aware of there being four in modern, and they're all from uh, Shadowmoor block, interestingly enough, I suppose. But there's some interesting little things that you can do with dwarves. <laughs> so we're going to start off with uh, not a dwarf, but you'll see why in just a second. So we have Goblin Charbelcher, and some of you older players have probably put two and two together on this already, on what we're doing. So Goblin Charbelcher is, sees play in its eponymous deck, and the sideboard of a few other decks like Oops All Spells. You simply reveal cards from the top of your library until you hit a land, and it deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to target creature or player, or if it reveals a mountain, then it deals double that and then you put them on the bottom of your library in any order, yada yada yada. So, usually you see this in decks that are either only playing zero or one lands, so that they hit all of the cards in their deck and that kills them, or you see this in decks that can remove the lands in their deck. So they play a normal-ish number of lands, and then something like Endless Horizons in Modern will remove the lands in the deck. There's also a reason why Goblin Recruiter is banned in Legacy. It's not just because of Goblin Charbelcher, although that's probably part of it. It's also just because there are so many good goblins that setting yourself up such that you'll draw a gas every single turn is just insane for a tribe like that. However, however, it should be noted that while Goblin Recruiter is banned, Dwarven Recruiter is not. Now part of that is because there aren't really any good dwarves, <laughs> not really, in, I actually even in Legacy, although there are a lot more in Legacy, there just aren't. In Magic in general, there aren't a lot of good dwarves, and this might be part of the reason why we don't see more dwarves being printed. It's because of this design space. The more dwarves you print, the better that Recruiter gets until eventually it goes the same way as Goblin Recruiter and has to get banned. But while it's not banned, it doesn't really matter, it does kind of, but for the purpose of this effect, it doesn't matter whether they are playable dwarves or not. All that we care about is we stack our deck such that there are at least 10 dwarves on top, usually 10, notwithstanding life gain, and then activate Goblin Charbelcher, reveal 10, and then hit a mountain. And 10 times 2 is 20, 20 damage. That's what this deck is doing. Is this a stupid deck? Yes, this is a very stupid deck. <laughs> but I very much like this particular combo. Now this isn't a deck that's simply made to be in and of itself. This isn't going to be a top tier deck, it's not going to win great tournaments. But I like to build this deck as a stepping stone on your way towards, yes, Charbelcher maybe, but more likely Imperial Painter, or Painter Grindstone, or just Painter, or whatever that deck is called nowadays because you'll notice that a number of cards that see play in here are also seeing play in the Imperial Painter decks. Now, if you want to make this deck more budget, take out some of the cards I'm about to show you and add more dwarves. You can, just make it more of a hardcore triple dwarf deck. That's perfectly fine, I understand entirely. Uh, if you want to make it less budget, then you make Imperial Painter. But what I'm going to show you here is the transitional deck. You build dwarves, and then you build this, by pieces, one at a time, and then you work your way up to Imperial Painter. And this is the kind of deck that I most like to show on the channel, because it gives you those stepping stones into something that's more playable. If you can't afford the deck all at once, a lot of people just won't play the deck. It's sad, but it's true. But if you can afford it bit by bit, say, Legacy, in fact. Okay, we'll start Mono Green and we'll work our way into buying Tropical Islands, buying Misty Rainforest, buying Force of Will, Fluster Storm, yada yada yada. You get the idea. You slowly work your way into it, but you start with something like Mono Green, which still has some game. It is one of the fastest decks in Legacy. A very consistent turn two deck. I say very consistent. Yeah, an awfully consistent turn two deck. So, 
The next ones that we're going to show you are more dwarves. These are the cards that you'll first want to replace as you make it into Imperial Painter. I actually was going to use <laughs> these cards and call the deck Minecraft. <laughs> Dwarven Blast Miner, which taps for two in red, <clears throat> destroy target non-basic land, non-basic land. And then next we have Dwarven Miner. Same thing, except it doesn't have morph and it has an extra point of toughness. So, seems good. <laughs> seems good. Hence Minecraft. You can see where that was coming from. Both are two mana. You just, on curve, you go turn two, Blast Miner, turn three, destroy a land. And hopefully you can keep a lot of decks off of the game. Just period. Uh, doesn't work against pretty much the only high lands deck that I can think of in the format, other than lands, obviously. It's miracles, and they play enough basics they can get around this, to be sure. But these are just powerful enough dwarves. Uh, we need something to go and get with Dwarven Recruiter. And these can actually be played outside of the combo itself. You can sort of use them as a prison lock, keep your opponent out of playing the game at all. Especially if you can control the board against a deck like, say, Delver, that does not have any basic lands. Well, Bug Delver, Rug Delver... I guess now we'd say Sultai and Teemer, uh, they don't have any basics. Something like Is It Delver might, of course you'd expect a, at least a basic mountain and at least a basic island. Even then they still have to find them, yada yada yada, you get the idea. These do stuff. These actually do stuff. Now this gives us 12 dwarves. Uh, I guess you could say 11, not counting the one recruiter that's entering the battlefield. Uh, we have two Dwuger? I'm not sure how to say this. Hedge Mage. So, this is sometimes a one-of in the Imperial Painter's sideboards. If you have at least two mountains, destroy an artifact. If you have at least two planes, destroy an enchantment. As you're working your way up towards um, Imperial Painter, often you'll find that they are two-color decks. The one white card that's in the main board, generally, is Enlightened Tutor, and you use it to go find your combo pieces like Painter, Servant, and Grindstone. Since you're running Plateaus for white, you can also run Dwuger Hedge Mage in the sideboard. You can go and get it with Imperial Recruiter, and this actually is just sometimes a nice little two-for-one, right? You use this card, destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, and even if we don't count this as a card, because it's only a 2-2 in Legacy, that's still, <laughs> that's still pretty fine. It has a lot of utility, in other words. It's tutorable, and it can destroy what we need. Uh, and then lastly, as our last dwarf, we have a one of Dwarven Thaumaturgist. I honestly don't know how to pronounce that. Forgive me, please. It has some of my favorite art. It's a Kipling West art, and you can definitely tell that. That is the reddest beard. That is just the reddest hair, period. Look at that. All right, so notwithstanding the cartoonish look, and I mean that in a good way, uh, switch power and toughness of target creature till end of turn. Yeah, Spell Skite isn't all that common, but it is a thing. If you ever see a creature with zero power, then yeah, you can use this to kill the creature. And also, sometimes you'll just find that turning Delver or turning Insectal Aberration into a 2-3, or uh, Vendillion Click into a 1-3, sometimes that actually matters. It won't work on True Name Nemesis, but works on an awful lot. It's, it's only a one of. We can tutor it up with Recruiter. That's, that's the thing with these two. We can tutor them up with Recruiter, if we just don't have the combo yet, but we need to find an answer. We need the main board artifact hate, use Recruiter, only stack the deck with one card, and it's the card you need. Same thing with Thaumaturgist, if we just absolutely need to. So these are the cards that we have that essentially form the combo, I guess, for Dwarven Char- or Gob <laughs> Dwarven Charbelcher, yes! For Goblin Charbelchers, for Dwarven Recruiters, for Blast Miners, for Miners, True Dwuger Hedge Mage, and a Thaumaturgist, forgive me if that's wrong. So 19 cards so far. Not very much. Again, if we're turning this into an Imperial Painter deck, then you start taking these out bit by bit, until eventually you don't need this combo anymore. Just, you don't have the critical mass from Recruiter in order to consistently Charbelcher. And especially as you turn it into a, a Painter Grindstone deck, you'll change out Mountains for, say, a Great Furnace, or Ancient Tomb, City of Traders, you, you get the idea. Uh, but, in order to, this is where I say it's a middling deck, it's a transitional deck. 
We aren't running more dwarves, like Bloodfire Dwarf, I think it's called, little one mana, uh, sack it to deal one damage to each creature without flying, which is actually a really good effect in Legacy, I find. Um, but we do have some transitional uh, cards in here that you'll want an Imperial Painter and that you can buy first to start working your way in and then you can start replacing the dwarves. So the first one is Simeon Spirit Guide. You'll notice that this deck is pretty slow. <laughs> That's a bit of an understatement. The deck is slow. Same thing with Imperial Painter, actually. It's not a fast deck. Playing something like Simeon Spirit Guide enables us to go and ramp just a little bit. We don't need too, too much ramp, obviously, but it does give us another creature if we need. More importantly, though, it gives us the ability to speed out uh, the combo or some lock pieces that we have going on. And our next card, Lotus Petal. Ta-da! Same thing. Same exact concept. Can't use it at instant speed. Well, you can play it and then sack it at instant speed, but you can't hide that you have it until uh, your opponent's turn. But nonetheless, so these are both four ups, which may be a little bit excessive. I see a lot of lists that go four guides, two petals, that's fine. But for what I'm doing right now, I think it's okay to have uh, four petals. If you need to, take one out for another card that we have coming up. I run four blood moons! Super expensive nowadays. Uh, but when you have Imperial Painter, this is a four of. And for good reason, it shuts out so many decks. And because we have all of this ramp, da da, we can get this out potentially as soon as turn one and just lock a lot of decks out of the game. The game, period. If you go on the play and you drop that on turn one against, say, the Delver decks, they better have Force of Will. Or they're just, technically speaking, screwed. <laughs> it's a very technical time there. Next, I'm running two Chalice of the Voids. Uh, just two. We could go higher. Uh, yeah, so in the current list that I run, we don't have any one drops, actually. And so we could definitely make this more. It doesn't hurt us at all. A lot of decks in Legacy are running, <laughs> obviously, the most powerful cards in the format tend to be one drops. We're talking like brains Brainstorm. Just the fact that you can shut off Brainstorm says a lot. A combo decks that cannot go off without their one drops, like Charbelcher. I think Oops All Spells can't go off without because of like Dark Ritual. I guess they can, but not easily. Uh, pretty much everything in Delver. Yeah, Chalice of the Void is, is sick, so you could go up on that. Next, I have four Ensnaring Bridge. Let's face it, we're not winning on the ground. Our creatures are small. Dwarves, unlike goblins, can't really fight on the ground. I think dwarves were made to be more of a prison archetype. We're destroying lands, for instance. We're destroying artifacts and enchantments, in the case of Hedge Mage. We're switching the creature's power and toughness. So, as a result, we don't win through combat. Like, ever. If we are winning through combat, our opponent is not running any creatures, or we've killed the few they have, and we just got lucky that they did not find anything going on. But, you'll notice the combo, of course, does not use combat. Set up the ensnaring bridge, stall, find combo, win. That is one way that you can go about doing it. You take it out against burn decks, for instance, but it's another thing that Imperial Painter decks will use. Now, they can actually win on the ground. Not easily, that's not their main game plan, but they actually can. We, on the other hand, can't. But in both cases, Imperial Painter and this deck, they can win through a combo that targets the opponent. Ta-da! Next, Sudden Shock. This is only a three of, this could be more. Sometimes this card is just actual, factual, better than Lightning Bolt. Shoutouts to Mythic MTG Tech for saying that before I did, and probably plenty of other people. This card is, seriously, I think it's better than Lightning Bolt in the format. Because can't be countered. Fights Infect, fights Delver, which are two of the more powerful decks against what we're doing. They're fast, and Delver can just keep us from ever doing anything. Uh, yeah, but if they don't have a clock, they can't win. And this is also true for a lot of other decks. Deathrite Shaman, for instance, that card in and of itself. Uh, we don't really use it for the damage, although it, we could use it to close out the game. We only have 15 dwarves. If we run out of doors with Recruiter, and we just didn't quite close it out, 
well then maybe we need sudden shock to go for it you get the idea um yeah this is a uh, kind of a thing this is the deck that I had this is not the full deck this is the shell okay actually this kind of is the full deck the rest are mountains spoiler alert 20 mountains <laughs> 20 mountains plus lotus bloom or petal plus simian spirit guide means that you can pretty consistently get at most like a turn to blood moon chalice of the void and staring bridge and lock the game against so many decks now by legacy standards these are moderately expensive cards blood moon chalice of the void and snaring bridge by legacy standards uh, even simian spirit guide and lotus petal are several dollars each and so this isn't the cheapest version of the deck but again i think of it this way this row is the row that you take out as you go from this transitional deck into Imperial Painter. This row is the deck you take out if you're going from this transitional deck to the more budget list. So you work your way up by uh, p picking up dwarves and probably the guides and petals, and then first you want to take Blood Moon because it shuts down so many decks. Then you're going to want to take Chalice of the Void because it doesn't hurt you much, it hurts your opponent. Then in Snaring Bridge, Sudden Shock, you can just basically go left to right here. Whereas in the case of this, of uh, the top row, it kind of goes the other way around. You take out the Thematurgist or move it to the sideboard. You take out Hedge Mage or move it to the sideboard. And when you take these out, you're done with Jar Belcher. You don't have the critical mass anymore, and so you need to switch it out over to Imperial Painter. But hopefully by that point, you already can. The most expensive card in that list is Imperial Recruiter, which actually could go into this list. It honestly could. Uh, especially if we're go taking out, say, uh, in some number of Ensnaring Bridge or Sudden Shocks, and we're just, once we have the lockdown, Imperial Recruiter, get Goblin, or Imperial, yeah, Recruiter, get Goblin, or Dwarven Recruiter, the one that's not banned, excuse me, and then, you know, Charbelcher. Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, Welder would also be good for a deck like this. If they take out your Goblin Charbelcher, you can switch it with one with an artifact, like say just a petal you don't care about, that's on the field for the Charbelcher. And that's it. That's what we have right here. I hope that you've enjoyed this shell of a deck. Uh, feel free to let me know how this goes. I wonder how many of these you have to take out before you decide that the combo is no longer worth being played. And I strongly suspect that there is a mathematical answer to that. I really don't know how I would go about finding that. Um, and so if you happen to know, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll be happy to check that out. In any case, thank you for watching this deck tech. As for the sideboard, by the way, the reason I'm not giving a sideboard is it depends on which version you're using. And frankly, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, I would assume that you would use a traditional, say, uh, Imperial Painter sideboard, but a lot of those assume that you have plateaus for Enlightened Tutor, so that you have an Enlightened Tutor sideboard, and you can get those options. But if you're a more budget list, you can't do that. Perhaps you could transform into a burn deck, like an Ensnaring Bridge burn deck. A lot of burn decks do run Ensnaring Bridge in the sideboard, because they can play through it while the opponent generally cannot. So that is one option for you, just transform into a burn deck, which also by legacy standards is fairly cheap. So that's another way that you could go about doing it. And otherwise, I don't really know. I would be interested to see what you all think could be done there. But in any case, I will see you later. Take care, Magic Community. Bye-bye.